What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today I've got a very exciting early review of the BAPE Adidas Ultra Boost. First off, huge thank you to Sold Out Jersey City. I was looking for this pair of sneakers at a store near me so I could review them early, and I couldn't find them anywhere because, ironically, they were sold out. But luckily, a friend of mine who actually works at Sold Out Jersey City let me know that they actually had a pair in stock. Shout out to you, you know who you are. So I took the train over this morning, picked it up, and now we're here, so huge shout out to them. But actually getting into the review, this sneaker is part of the BAPE Adidas football collection that's dropping for the Super Bowl. There's actually a lot of pieces dropping, but by far the most coveted are the BAPE Adidas Ultra Boosts, which come in both this green camo colorway and a black and gray camo colorway. Apparently the black and gray colorway is a lot more limited even though this green camo colorway is more standard babe. Personally I actually think I prefer the black and gray colorway to this green camo colorway and that's because this green camo colorway at least for me is a lot harder to rock. I don't wear a lot of camo so it's gonna be harder to find something that works with this. The black and gray colorway is more muted therefore it'd be easier to rock with a lot of different things but I'm just happy to have a pair in hand. Both BAPE Adidas Ultra Boosts are releasing tomorrow Saturday February 2nd for $200 150 bucks, which is a huge amount of money for an Ultra Boost. But hey, if you're a Bait fan, I guess it's worth the investment. So jumping right into the sneaker itself, the most obvious thing about this sneaker is the full bait patterned prime knit. Adidas actually did something pretty interesting with this prime knit. Rather than actually printing on or heat pressing on the details on the upper of the sneaker, they actually stitched it into the prime knit itself. To my knowledge, I don't think Adidas has ever done anything like this on the prime knit upper of an Ultra Boost. If you look at some of the previous Bape Adidas collaborations, the way that they actually put the pattern onto the upper was printed onto more of a fabric like material. And in some ways, I think this is really cool because the pattern is pretty much guaranteed to last as long as the Prime Knit does. Unlike the undefeated Ultra Boost from about a year ago where they actually heat pressed on the undefeated logo, which pretty much peeled off right away. There is sort of a downside to this method, however, and that's because the pattern itself is actually stitched in as if your grandmother was stitching a quilt. The pattern doesn't really have any smooth edges. It almost looks like you're looking at a very pixelated image. So it's kind of a trade-off. You get all the durability and comfort of a regular Prime Knit upper, but the pattern just doesn't look as good. Another thing that I actually noticed about this Prime Knit is that the texture and the feel of the Prime Knit looks exactly the same all the way around the sneaker. And that's not usually the case. Usually on the toe you have some ventilation holes or some sort of textured pattern actually woven into the Prime Knit. This time around it's just a smooth flat Prime Knit that runs all the way around the sneaker. I don't really think that's a good thing or a bad thing. It's just something that I noticed and something that I wanted to point out. As I mentioned before this colorway is the green camo colorway which I think is kind of funny because if you look at a majority of the colors on this sneaker they're all kind of tans and browns. Yes the bright green pops the most and you've got some forest greens hidden throughout but it's primarily a tan sneaker. That's totally just me being a stickler. I didn't need to make that point. The actual feel and stretch of the Prime Knit is pretty much exactly the same to standard Prime Knit used on Ultra Boosts. This sneaker isn't an Ultra Boost 1.0 or even a 4.0 for that matter. It's just kind of a Ultra Boost with a very smooth Prime Knit. As you continue back on the sneaker you've got these black flat laces with these white lace tips that have the words a bathing ape printed in gold. The laces obviously weave through this black midfoot cage that it's accented by this gloss white on the Adidas stripes. I didn't think I was gonna like the white at first because I thought that it just stood out a little bit too much, but now that I'm seeing it in person, it's actually a pretty nice touch. Continuing up the sneaker, at the top of the tongue you've got this black patch that on the left shoe has Adidas's sportswear logo in gold and on the right shoe you've got the bathing ape logo with an American flag overlaid on top of it. Moving inside the sneaker you pretty much get to standard Ultra Boost territory with this black soft sock liner. The one difference on the inside of the shoe is the insole which actually comes in full bape camo and of course it also features the same logos that were on the tongue printed on the heel. I don't really know how long these heel logos are gonna last so if you're a collector and you're eventually going to sell your sneakers, maybe take out the insoles when you wear them. As for fit, unsurprisingly, the Bape Adidas Ultra Boost fits just like any other Ultra Boost. For me, that's true to size, and this Bape Ultra Boost definitely fit me true to size, but for you, it might be something different. So if you've never tried on a pair of Ultra Boosts before, go down to your local sneaker store, try on a pair of Ultra Boosts, and make sure the sizing is right for you. Continuing back on the sneaker, you get to the classic matte black heel counter with the Adidas Ultra Boost text accented in gold, which I just think looks great. And then moving around to the back of the sneaker, you've got more of that 
that bathing ape prime knit, and of course your heel pull tab. Moving down on the shoe, you get to this nice semi-gloss black painted midsole. I personally think the black boost ties into the upper of the sneaker nicely. However, I do see how normal white boost would tie into the white Adidas stripes really nicely. I shouldn't have to say this by this point, especially if you're watching this channel, but if you haven't tried boost, you're missing out. It's an incredibly comfortable midfoot cushion. It feels great underfoot. Yes, it kind of looks like styrofoam, but I think the comfort definitely makes up for the looks. And then finally moving to the bottom of the sneaker, you've got this black webbed continental rubber outsole. As you can see between the webbing, the natural color of the boost is white. And if you didn't already know, this black color is just painted. It's not dyed or anything like that. And then finally accenting the center of the midfoot, you've got this gold torsion system. Overall, the Bape Adidas Ultra Boosts are a pretty decent collab. I do feel like it's a little bit dated. It seems like a shoe that came out in like 2016 or 2017 but I'm glad that they're trying to breathe life back into the Ultra Boost by releasing a hyped up collaboration. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this sneaker releases on February 2nd for 250 bucks and will be limited. So if you're trying to grab a pair, well, raffle entries are probably already over, so you're probably gonna have to pay resale by this point. So with that, we pretty much wrap up the review of the Bape Adidas Ultra Boost in this green camo colorway. Now, I would love to know your thoughts on this sneaker and whether you're planning to try and grab a pair tomorrow when they drop, so make sure to leave those comments in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe down below if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.